John, what are you doing? What are you doing? Quit hitting me. Quit hitting me. Carrie, Carrie, you're my only friend. You see what he's doing to me. Please call the police. John, stop. 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 Carrie, call the police. Call the police. It's urgent. It's urgent. He won't stop hitting me. That's for all the things you've done to me as a wife. You have been nothing but a disgruntled, miserable woman. You can't call yourself a wife. You're nothing. You're nothing to me. You're going to break my nose. God forbid. Police. Open up. John flees the scene. He realizes this time he might go to jail this time. He's been to the police station several times for domestic abuse. And this is not the first time that the police have been to this address. And Carrie called the police, but somebody else must have heard her cries for help. And this time, John is fleeing for his life because he knows the police are here to pick him up for domestic abuse. As the police approached the house, Grace was bleeding from the nose. John had fractured her nose. John was in real trouble. John had not only fled the apartment and fled the police, but was tackled. He was now arrested, and he was now placed in police custody. While he was placed under police custody, Grace was being cared for on a gurney by the EMT en route to the local hospital. Meanwhile, at the hospital, the waiting room was full. Fortunately for Grace, she got there in time to be treated by the EMT and doctors immediately. Grace was at the shelter where advocates were there to safely help relocate her. Grace was fortunate to have assistance, to have moved all her belongings immediately while John was in jail. Judge Quinn was the judge presiding over her case at that night at night court. Grace was met by, by the police one last time to thank the police for assisting her, and she left on that long journey ahead to Springfield where she would be able to live freely and safely. As she was moving her belongings into her car, whatever she could bring with her, she was met with a new agency in Springfield to help her with her relocation, as assigned by the judge. Judge Quinn was a judge that was determined to put an end to the domestic violence that was going on, and especially with what had occurred with John. John Hamilton was charged with domestic abuse. Felony charges were pending. So the case was pending at that moment whether John was going to be released from jail. In the meantime, Grace was leaving and fleeing domestic abuse. Since Carrie was a witness, Judge Quinn ordered John Hamilton to maintain his order to stay in no contact. Would he also be released from jail in 30 days? This was enough time to help rescue Grace. Saving Grace's life was the top priority for Judge Quinn. As Grace traveled to the agency where she met the agency that was going to take on her case immediately, Michelle Sparks was a director and Marissa Estes was the assistant and paralegal. They would be assisting her in relocating to her new home and also funds ordered by Judge Quinn. Grace still fight also dealing with the injuries that she was barely grasping and trying to cope with was improving but still had black and blue eyes swollen and underneath her eyes making it hard not to notice that she had been a victim of a crime. Upon meeting a 
everybody at the agency, including the director, the assistant, including Kelly, another assistant, they all had discussed the matters of the case. They also networked with a landlord whose name was going to be revealed as they were going to meet the prospective landlord in this matter of moving into the house. The house that was selected that was going to be in a safe location for Grace to move into. Joe Metzger was a well-known, very helpful donor who helped women in crisis. And because she was in crisis, this man was the perfect person for the situation that she needed. Now, as far as everything was going with the case, the case was on schedule for 30 days that John would be released from jail. The felony charges were pending for domestic abuse. And as they were preparing for the case, they said that they had enough time to prepare for the case while en route to meeting the landlord, Joe Metzger, they were discussing how they were gonna go about preparing for the case. As this tall man was at the gas station, Grace was pumping gas. And because of the visible injuries on Grace's face, he must have felt some kind of sorrow for her. He decided to pump gas into her car while she was turned, had her back turned. He introduced himself and he said, hello, my name is Michael Hope. You must be new here to Springfield. Grace said, yes, I am, and left. While Grace was going to pay for the gas at the gas station with cash, Michael, the man, paid for it with his charge card. Grace said, hello, what are you doing? Looking puzzled, Michael is your name, right? He said, yes. He says, did you pay Michelle, I'm sorry, did you pay for my gas? He said, yes, why, I did. Grace said and looked at him, but why? You didn't have to do that, Michael said. Consider that my way of introducing myself to you and welcome to Springfield. Here's my business card. Call me for lunch. I got to go back to work. It was nice to meet you, Grace. I hope to talk to you soon. Grace was stunned. That's the first time she had an interaction with a man other than John Hamilton. Then she looked at his business card and it said he is a CEO of a local car rental service company called Smithton Rentals. She was impressed. She got into the car and met Joe Metzger, the prospective landlord. The meeting was in five minutes, so she needed to get there quite quickly. Grace met Joe Metzger, the landlord, and it couldn't have been a better match. Joe Metzger was in the entertainment industry locally. She got the keys, and then by the time she paid the rent and deposit with the funds available from Judge Quinn, she had to get all the important details out of the way, and Grace had the keys to the house that night. For that night, that is. Joe Metzger was happy to have a good tenant. He said he had shared some horror stories about the previous tenant who was on drugs and was very pleased to have Grace because her, um, her appearance and her attitude. After Joe Metzger handed the keys, he said goodbye and he sent his well wishes. He said, Joe, good luck tonight, young lady. Tonight is a full moon. Take full advantage of it. It's a night that you don't want to miss. I'll see you soon. And he closed the door. Grace just smiled with relief. She was ex she had escaped. She has this beautiful little cottage in the mountains. It was breathtaking. It was still early though, and she needed to get some supplies and some items at the local thrift store. Fortunately, the agency helped her with a couch and a chair. Grace called the agency and Marissa answered. Grace said, someone mentioned that there would be a place where I could get dishes and cups and necessities. Marissa said, we're on our way. We're over there. We're coming over to help you. 
Meanwhile, Grace had no idea how she was going to be able to furnish the house. Within 15 minutes, a large box truck started pulling in, backing into her driveway. Beep, 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 is all she could hear coming into the driveway. And all you could see is Marissa, the assistant, pops out of the front driver's seat, and she's driving the box truck. I told you we would be here to help you, said Marissa. Releases the back and opens up a stockpile of furniture from silverware to blankets to everything you could need to supply a beautiful looking house. And tears started streaming down Gracie's eyes. Gracie just realized that Marissa had no, nothing but good things to say. It was this moment that Gracie said, I have no words. I am speechless. Marissa said, let's get unpacking. We have a house to decorate. Grace smiled. It was 7 p.m. and everything that Grace needed was made available, including a telescope from to see the moon and stars that was a gift by an anonymous donor. Grace said to ask Marissa, who sent such a wonderful gift like a telescope? Marissa said, I was told it was an anonymous donation. Grace said, wow, what a wonderful, beautiful way to gift me with such a wonderful gift. By that of who? She said, an anonymous donor. Grace said, how wonderful, recalling the conversation with her landlord, Joe Metzger. Hint, hint. Marissa said, well, it looks like the fern we furnished just everything in time for a late dinner. Are you hungry? Grace said, yeah, well, sure I am. Marissa said, let's go to the local pizza pub down the street and let's go get some food there. Grace, being new to the area, said, okay, let's go. The pizza pub was a very busy place usually, but on the Thursday night, I guess it was kind of slow for this being not the weekend. And just as they sat down, a young owner came up to them and at, took their order. His name was Johnny Knox. Johnny Knox is a son's the son of the owner, John, Mr. Knox. So what is it going to be, ladies? Four pieces of pizza? Yes, make that pepperoni. Four slices of pepperoni with two Diet Pepsis, said Marissa. And while Marissa and Grace had chatted like two teenagers for 15 minutes while they were waiting for the pizza, Johnny came over and said to the ladies, here's your pizza. You want anything else? And he said, no. Grace was so happy. And a new version of herself came up and said excitedly, no, thank you, sir. Everything's great. As the girls were finishing their pizza, a bell at the door rang for another customer who was coming in. Johnny left as they finished off their pizza to pay the bill. Another customer comes in, and to her surprise, it was Michael. Marissa was just about to leave as she was paying the bill, and Grace said to Marissa, I hope you don't mind, but I'd like to stay around just to relax some. It's been such a long day. Marissa said, I completely understand. You only have a block away for a safe distance to your cottage. Grace said, thank you, Marissa, for everything. Again, words cannot express my gratitude. Marissa smiled and walked out the door to the box truck just as she was walking out the door. Michael was there waiting for his order at the pizza pub. While Grace was sitting alone, waiting and relaxing, by trying to get attention to Michael, she waved and waved, but Michael didn't notice her at the pizza pub. Johnny Knox looked over and noticed her waving and nudged Michael 
and Michael noticed that it was Grace. Grace, said Michael, what are you doing here? And Grace obviously was excited that Michael noticed. She said in unison, how, they both said in unison, how are you? And they chuckled. Grace said, you first. Michael said, I'm here to pick up an order. What are you doing? Grace ex explained that she had just moved into her house and a great she had just had dinner with a great friend. Michael said, you're making friends pretty fast here. Grace said, you're so right. I love it here. Michael said, would you take me up on a lunch next week? I'm pretty busy on the weekends as I work a lot of extra hours on the weekends. Grace said, absolutely. When? How about we meet here Tuesday at 12.30, the same place here at the Pizza Pub, and we can go from here. We can go anywhere you like, Michael said. Grace said, that is an excellent idea. He said, listen, I need to get back to work. I have some hungry employees. 